that Boeing 737 MAX pilots have just 40 seconds to override software during a fault before the plane nosedives. Pilots from five airlines participated in the tests. They were designed to recreate the error that's suspected of downing Lion Air Flight 610, which crashed into the Java Sea, killing 181 passengers in October 2018. Since then, a 737 MAX has also crashed in Ethiopia. And yesterday, a 737 MAX bound for storage in California was forced to make an emergency landing in Orlando due to engine issues. The airline involved says the problem was not related to the aircraft computer system. Now, aviation expert Jeff Thomas joins me now. Good morning. Uh, these morning. reports say there are 40 seconds for a pilot to do a manual override to avoid a deadly crash. Is that enough time? Well, it's, a, it's an extraordinary report because I've been talking to a number of Qantas uh, check captains who fly the, uh, the, the 737 NG and some Virgin guys as well. And they say, well, 15 seconds is all we need because there's, what, what's missing here is there are two cutoff switches. You simply cut the system off. They sit beside the pedestal, beside the pilots, uh, and it's what's called a memory item. It's not something you have to look up the manual for. You absolutely instinctively know it like putting your foot on the brake if you're about to crash. It's a memory item, two switches, kills the system, and then you fly the aeroplane. So very perplexing sort of report coming out of the United States on that 40 seconds. Yeah, and given you've just said that it is, is down to memory, we've heard that with the Lion Air flight, the captain was consulting a tech manual. That's got to be pretty concerning. Look, indeed, and if I can go back to, if I can use this analogy of your cruise control, you're driving to the Hunter Valley to the, go to the wineries, you get a surge of power on your, on, your, on your cruise control, what do you do? Do you ask your wife to pull the manual out of the glove box? No, you put your foot on the brake. It's the same here. It's a memory item. You switch the system off. It's just that simple, which is a message that's really being missed in, in all of these, uh, in these two terrible tragedies. So if these fatal crashes are largely due to a lack of pilot training, why is Boeing then working on a fix? Well, <clears throat> both Boeing and Airbus always work on fixes and upgrades to their aircraft all the time. As things go wrong, they say, wow, we, we've got to fix this. We never anticipated this. What we're, what we're seeing here with these two terrible tragedies for Airbus and Boeing is they're going to have to rethink how they design their cockpits of their aeroplanes because they were assuming a certain level of experience of pilots and that has proven to be not the case. So they're going to look at redesign of the cockpits, they've got to look at various upgrades, they've got to look at additional training to, to cover off on every possible scenario uh, that, po that possibly hadn't been envisaged earlier. So the latest case, the other Boeing 737 MAX that was forced to make an emergency landing yesterday, uh, is that a concern? Could there be more faults with this model? No, it's one of those uh, little glitches, uh, engine, uh, little engine failure. Uh, say little engine failure, sometimes they can be big. But no, it's, it's a small uh, issue um, and, and, not, and not indicative of the max. I mean, the, the reality is the 737 itself, the family, is actually the most reliable aeroplane in the world. Uh, so this, this is really a real challenge for Boeing to, to have this problem uh, with, with what is the most reliable aeroplane in the world.